And following news about those failed banks, the stock market ended the day with mixed reaction. The Dow and the S&P 500 both finished in the red today. The Nasdaq, though, was able to squeeze out a moderate gain. And joining us now to put this into more context is financial professional Nathan Ford from Vital Retirement Planners. Nathan, thank you so much for being with us today. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. We're just going to kind of get straight to it because I know I think a lot of people are reading a lot of these stories, seeing things and not really understanding <laughs> what this means. Can we just start with what causes a bank to fail? What does that mean? Well, what's so scary about this is banks are supposed to be the safest institutions, right? That's where you put your money if you want it to be safe. This is the second largest bank failure in U.S. history, uh, the largest since 2008. And really what pushed this is aggressive interest rate hikes that put a lot of strain on the assets of Silicon Valley Bank, which were mostly startup companies. And so basically what they did is they were short on capital and they made an, an announcement basically saying, hey, we need $2.2 billion for our balance sheet. And uh, there was a rush uh, for people to go get their money and about $42 billion dollars was withdrawn. And uh, this is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy because, of course, people are very afraid of uh, bank, uh, banks failing. Um, and, and so they're so afraid of it that they rush to get their money, which causes the failure at the end of the day. And so for customers, consumers um, who are directly impacted by this, what, what have been those outcomes? What has that looked like for those people? So uh, essentially, when a bank fails, it basically means uh, that they're out of capital. Uh, now, there is, if the bank is participating with the uh, FDIC, uh, which is a federal deposit insurance corporation, uh, those deposits are insured up to $250,000. Uh, so for folks who have more than $250,000 at these banks, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean all is lost, because in some cases, these banks can be acquired. There can be other owners, which could infuse additional capital. And so there are ways to get those funds. Now, uh, emphasis on the I, on FDIC, it's insurance. So these banks are all pooling their risk of a bank run, essentially, is what's happening. And so to increase uh, consumer confidence, the government steps in, kind of takes control, and makes sure uh, those who have their funds insured, get their deposits, and then kind of work down the line to those who uh, don't have their deposits insured. It can be kind of a scary time, but we would recommend you, you stay calm. And at the end of the day, let's learn a lesson. This is one of the greatest, one of the, the most important reasons why you should be diversified, not only in, in your investments, but in your savings as well. Oh, that's good information. Nathan Ford from Vital Retirement Planners, making us a bit smarter on something that, like you said, is so scary for so many people. We so appreciate it. Thank you.